You know, every few months we see something in the Gen AI space that really feels like you're like touching the future. And today, we've got two of them. First, we'll be taking a look at Marble from World Labs. I did cover this a few videos back, but we're gonna do a refresh, but more importantly, it's now widely available and they've made a ton of improvements. Plus, in terms of pricing, well, you're gonna be really surprised at the cost. Also, Google just dropped their research on Sema 2, basically an agent that lives inside of a 3D environment, follows instructions, and learns. Yeah, it's pretty wild. All right, let's get this bad boy powered up to 1.21 gigawatts. Kicking off, World Labs Marble has released. As I said, I did cover this a few videos back when I released a short film utilizing it called Alarm. Uh, we'll take a quick look at it here. It's only 40 seconds, so just to get everyone up to speed. Shift work begins in one rotation. Shift work begins in one rotation. Shift work begins. Okay. Yeah, okay, I'm up. Compliance acknowledge. Next sleep in 17 hours. People always think working on a station is so adventurous. It's really not. The food is terrible. We never get to sleep and... Shift work begins in one half rotation. I sleep in my clothes and put up with that voice all the time. But you know what? For this view, it's all worth it. <laughs> Shift work begins in one quarter rotation. Oh yeah? How many rotations until the coffee maker is fixed? <sighs> so the big thing with Marble is that I was able to utilize it to essentially create a virtual set where, you know, I could I could move the camera around, find a good shot, um, and then take a screenshot of that. And then from there, image edit a character in. World Labs was actually nice enough to do a case study on the short. So if you want to learn more about it or uh, check out the full video walkthrough that I did, uh, both are linked down below. To be honest, this is the first time I've ever been a case study. I'm just glad it wasn't for anything medical. So at its core, World Labs utilizes Gaussian splats to generate its 3D environment. So uh, here, let's take a look at, uh, yeah, this is outside of the splat. So, uh, you know, splats do have some inherent limitations to them, but, uh, you know, what they do offer is essentially like spatial understanding and consistency more than anything. Uh, for example, on a lot of other models, if we were to, say, zoom in on this pillow, uh, turn away from the pillow and then return, that pillow either might not be there or it might be colored something completely different. And before we move too much further into this, I think it's important just to talk very briefly about the why of Marble. So Dr. Fei-Fei Li, who is kind of commonly known as the godmother of AI, or auntie if you grew up on an island, also don't mess with auntie, she'll throw a shoe at you and that is deadly. Well, she is the founder of World Labs and the overall goal here is to solve a major problem of like multimodal LLMs in that while they do like see and hear things, they don't really understand how the world works. Dr. Lee actually just released a short essay on this topic. Um, it's linked down below. Highly recommend you give it a read, uh, essentially arguing that spatial intelligence is the scaffolding upon which cognition, our cognition at least, is built, and that, you know, AI models don't think that way, at least not yet. But moving back to World Labs proper, there's actually a ton of stuff you can do here, along with a bunch of stuff that they added since the last time I was here, uh, all of which does kind of create a super powerful tool that honestly is applicable to everyone. And what's cool about it is it sort of really does meet you with where you are. We're gonna dig into all of these features, but as kind of a top line, we can of course still image or text prompt to generate up 3D environments. We can now multi-image prompt uh, with up to four images to mash together essentially to create one location. We can now edit our environments either via text, image, or uh, 3D objects. Uh, so taking this location kind of like this, uh, I don't know, like taverny, medieval tavern kind of thing, uh, and then editing it. Now we have like, like a medieval nightclub, I guess, or a comedy club. Uh, yeah, two drink minimum, no jokes about the king. For folks that are good with 3D, you can now uh, utilize primitives essentially to create environments as well. Uh, I am not good with 3D, so we're not gonna be looking too deeply into this part of it. But what's kind of cool is that you can use like, you know, pre-made templated objects essentially and place them into the scene as well to essentially get the same uh, effect. We can also now expand our locations, and that was a limitation uh, in that original version. Uh, we'll take a look at this. Uh, it's a little bit on the finicky side right now if you're not familiar with like 3D stuff, but um, you know, I, I think by futzing around with it, you can probably get a pretty decent result. 
And finally, for the more video centric folks, yeah, we can now export video and uh, actually even enhance it as well, like right on platform. So hopping in first with like text to environment. Uh, if you give it a text prompt, obviously it will immediately start creating a Gaussian splat for you. Uh, although if you use advanced editing over here, if you notice that'll open up essentially this tab over here, which begins with a uh, panorama, a draft, and then the world. Uh, so if you actually utilize advanced mode and then hit create, what you'll end up with is essentially a 360 panorama of that environment. Now you can't move around in this one. This is just a panoramic view, but this is a spot where you can make edits to this panorama. So let's uh, select an area here. Um, let's just use this, for example. And let's just text prompt in a large marble statue of a banana. We can't go one video without talking about nano banana. Uh, okay, let's hit apply edit, see what we get. And I gotta say, as ridiculous as it is, uh, yeah, marble really delivers here. Uh, we do have a marble statue of uh, two bananas, uh, two of them, in fact, as well. So yeah, Marble is apparently as hyped for Nano Banana 2 as we all are. Um, so after this, all we have to do is simply hit Generate World. And after a few minutes, yeah, we now have like this 3D environment that we can walk around in and uh, well, you know, go check out the details of our banana up close. Uh, now, there are some limitations. We went over this in the previous video in that, again, it's a Gaussian splat. So um, things that it does not see, it, it does not see, for example, behind the banana here. Although uh, we do have some interesting tools to look at on that front in just a minute. Now, in terms of combining environments, uh, I ended up taking two shots, um, both generated up in mid journey, uh, and then used them as, uh, you know, essentially image references to see what we would get. So bashing them together, uh, what Marvel outputted was uh, this environment. So uh, this is obviously, you know, one of the images. And then if we turn around, uh, we have our, our second image back over here. Uh, now, what's kind of interesting is actually, like, if you look down these side streets, they're, they're pretty empty, um, leading me to believe that if I were to give it four image inputs, uh, essentially, we'd see a lot more detail over there. Skipping around a little bit with features, just because I think this one's pretty cool. Um, yeah, we have now have the ability to record footage here as well. So if we hit record footage um, and then record in a new project, that'll take us out to this timeline view. Uh, and then from here, we just kind of like find a spot. Uh, let's just say, let's go back to this location over here. Um, and then um, essentially down here, we have a timeline. So we just hit a keyframe down here. Um, we move our timeline through, change our angle to wherever we want, um, add another keyframe. And we can check our work by uh, just scrolling back here and you can see it in this preview window down here. So let me finish off a couple of moves. So yeah, not the greatest of timing in terms of our animation, but uh, it definitely does give you an idea that, yeah, this is this is actually pretty easily doable at this point. Oh, that's cool. I didn't actually realize that you can actually change the time uh, over here. I thought we were limited to eight seconds. So I just kicked it up to 20 seconds um, and then laid some keyframes into this environment. So let's take a look at how this comes out. So this definitely comes out a lot better than my initial result there. Camera definitely is a lot slower and you know less wild considering that we have a lot longer to work with here. Um, now, one thing we do definitely do see a lot of that Gaussian cloudiness and spikiness going on here. Uh, when you when I tried to run an enhance on this, that's where I did discover a wall essentially on the video side of things in that enhancing only works uh, with videos up to 10 seconds long. Now, if you want you know maximum control, you can obviously export your environment and bring it into Blender and do all of your you know, blendery things to it or unreal. But I mean, once again, I, I 3D is 100% not my wheelhouse. Even if you're not a 3D person, um, they do have like this canvas feature here that I, I know it's if you don't know 3D, this looks uh, annoying and scary, right? Um, but you know, what you can do is import in one of your splats as I did here. Uh, this was like an older environment that we looked at in the first video and then can just kind of bash it together uh, with uh, another environment. So um, so yeah, I mean, this is terrible and you can feel free to laugh at me all that you want. But again, I, I suck with 3D. Um, but yeah, this, um, you know, just simply by using uh, an edit brush here and then, you know, just kind of drawing along here uh, and then just, you know, hitting delete. Um, like I was able to kind of like, you know, smash two environments together. Uh, is this great? No, it's not. But again, I'm terrible with 3D. But again, you don't necessarily have to be a 3D expert or anything. I just think it's a good idea, especially at this point, to start familiarizing yourself 
with, uh, you know, like workflows like 3D. And I mean, as much as I know you guys hate it, uh, like node based murder boards, because so much is constantly changing in the AI space. I think it's important to have at least a rudimentary understanding of, you know, how these various UIs all work. Um, again, you don't have to become an expert at all of this. This is actually fairly easy if you just kind of play around with it a little bit. Um, like you'll figure it out pretty quickly. So yeah, Marble is definitely something that I think that, you know, kind of all of us should check out. Um, you know, no matter what approach you're taking coming into it, uh, be it 2D video or from a 3D background, um, there's a little something for everyone here. Um, and pricing wise, uh, things are actually pretty cool. Uh, you can actually try it out for free. Uh, you get 7,000 credits and four world generations. Um, and then for right now, you can actually jump up to the pro plan for $1 for your first month. So um, yeah, that I think is definitely worth it. So returning back to our banana ballroom, Room. Uh, you know, of course, these environments that we end up generating up in Marble are, you know, devoid of life. So, you know, what if we could, you know, add some characters or some independent life into that? Well, that brings us to our next section. But first, a uh, quick word from today's sponsor, Design Arena, uh, which is actually very relevant to your interests. So if you've ever jumped between like 10 different AI sites, trying to figure out which one is the best image or video generator or LLM, and actually you're watching this channel, so I know you have. And that is exactly why I was so happy to partner with our friends at Design Arena for today's video, as they have built not only a leaderboard, but well, an entire playground for everything in the AI space, well, th that matters to us. Logos, images, videos, even full websites. It's all powered by the latest state-of-the-art AI models and well, we could battle them out for free. So just to give you an idea of how it works, uh, we're gonna leave it on models here and then uh, I'm just gonna slide this over to video for what we're designing today. And then from here, the prompt is just gonna be our old channel chestnut, a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city sidewalk. And after a few moments, we of course do end up with two generations of our prompt. Uh, you know, critically, of course, we don't know what model is what, if this is kind of a blind taste test. Between the two, and I actually think that both of them look pretty good, I am leaning towards the one on the left, although it does look like our guy is about to do like his typical jaywalking thing and actually kind of looks like he's get, about to get hit by a car if he does that. Uh, that said, I am still gonna prefer the one on the left. So interestingly, the version that I ended up preferring was actually Kling 2.5 Turbo Pro, and that was over Sora 2. Let me know which one you thought looked better. Additionally great is that that vote that we cast uh, actually helps power the world's largest leaderboard for AI generated visuals. By the way, quick little fun fact on ELO ratings, which is something that I think that you may have come across. It is ELO, uh, not ELO like Mr. Blue Sky, which is a great song by the way but rather it's a system of ranking designed by a guy named Arpad Elo, who uh, not only was a chess master and a physics professor, but the 11th person inducted into the Chess Hall of Fame. See, we're always just learning stuff here. But back to Design Arena, it is super easy, it is completely free, and the thing that I really like about the whole like blind taste test thing is that sometimes you'll end up generating something, really liking it, and discovering that it is a model that you would not have thought of. And with kind of a neat function here, uh, they do actually, once you generate something up, actually, offer a video to video edit feature here as well. Um, so we're gonna take our winning man in a blue business suit here and try to turn this into a nighttime cinematic scene. Let's see what happens. And of course, after a few minutes, we end up with two outputs, one of which did comply, the other one uh, clearly did not. Uh, although we did kind of go a little bit on the cyberpunk side on this guy, but still, I mean, I gotta give it up. It actually did the thing that I asked it to. So, you know, obviously number two wins here. After a quick drum roll, turns out that was Wan Vase that managed to change day to night, whereas Hunyan uh, was not able to you know, turn the hands of time. And obviously there's so much more to discover and test here from image generation to LLMs to game development, and you can try it for free over at designarena.ai. Uh, for sure, worth the spot in your bookmarks folder. Moving on, Google have released their research on Sima 2, or Scalable Instructable Multi-World Agent. It's a shame we couldn't get a B in there. We'd have Simba, although we'd also probably get in trouble with Disney. We actually got a look at Sima 1 uh, when Genie 2 first appeared on the scene. Uh, this was a thing where you could uh, essentially prompt, you know, 
a character in a, a generated image game uh, to, you know, take actions uh, such as, you know, go behind the house here, turn around. Um, and then down here, we had things like go up the stairs, go to where the plants are and go to the middle door. Now, as to what Sima 2 is actually for beyond playing Minecraft and No Man's Sky for you, well, that kind of plugs back into the article that uh, Dr. Fei-Fei Li was talking about earlier in this video. In that with Sima 1, you could give it really simple instructions like turn left, climb the ladder, open the map, and it would do those things. But now giving it a bit of a brain transplant with Gemini, uh, it's less about taking instructions and more about uh, sort of figuring out how it's going to accomplish goals within a world setting. Now, is it 100% going to be like your ultimate co-op buddy in every extraction shooter? Uh, no, it's not. In fact, actually, it's sitting around 65% right now in terms of success rate uh, at human here is uh, slightly above 75%, um, but it has made a pretty dramatic leap from Sima 1, uh, which had a 31% success rate. But I think it's important to note that Sima 1, that was December of 2024. So in less than a year, we've essentially doubled the success rate. As always, a great excuse to break out the wait but why graph. So while it's really cool that we can take Sima 2 and I don't know, plug it into say Skyrim and prompt it to grind me to level 80 so that, you know, I don't have to waste a hundred hours and getting shot in the knee a bunch of times. Where things get interesting is when you actually plug Sima 2 into Genie 3 and essentially Genie 3 ends up creating an environment or a game world or a world that uh, Sima 2 does not know about. Uh, it essentially has to go out and figure it out on its own. So it's this is frame by frame video that's being generated with the instruction, you know, go to the bench. Um, and we can see Sima essentially tackling that direction. Here's where things get interesting in this idea of like, what's feeding what here? Because we have like, you know, Gemini, Genie 3, and Sima all kind of like coexisting and working together on this generation. It's It's really fascinating. So in my mind, there is a bit of a chicken and the egg situation happening here. Don't get me wrong. It's pretty amazing. I just don't know like mechanically how all three of these systems are working in tandem with one another. I, frankly, I think it's a miracle that they are. Um, that said, I do have to point out that, you know, it's still prone to uh, AI video hallucination and uh, not necessarily decoherence, but just like forgetfulness. Like in this example, uh, we see here, there's like, it looks like a sea turtle that's probably back there, kind of like flapping along. Sea turtles are awesome, by the way. Um, we come over to this orange coral here. It does identify the orange coral. And then um, the command is issued to swim ahead to the path ahead. And as we see, our sea turtle is now turned into um, kind of like a, a, a rock um, or yeah, or some kind of like alien creature that has uh, fallen to the bottom of the ocean. So, you know, it will still do things like that. Now, we do know that Genie 3 does have environmental consistency over a long horizon, as they point out here, um, stating that it will remain consistent for several minutes and visual memory can extend back as far as one minute. But Sima 2 actually has a relatively short memory of its interactions. Uh, they state that it still faces challenges with very long horizon complex tasks that require extensive multi-step reasoning and goal verification. So going back to our Skyrim example, that probably means that Sima 2 forgets all the quests that it's supposed to be on. That said, I do the same thing. So maybe I'm lower on this like task completion success rate than I think that I am. So ultimately, what is Sima 2 all about? Well, I mean, really, it plugs almost directly back into the essay uh, written by Dr. Fei-Fei Li that I talked about earlier in this video. Again, read that uh, article. It's linked down below. It's really great, but it really is about teaching AI how the real world works and that, you know, the rules can change on you on a dime. And like half the time, most of us don't even know what the rules are. And while robotics are the first thing that come to my mind, uh, I did talk to Mustafa Solomon, the head of Microsoft AI, uh, a couple of months ago. Did you know he actually used to manage an ice cream shop? True story. So after talking about ice cream for a few minutes, I was like, hey, man, you know, between video models, world models and, you know, LLMs, like where is everything headed? Is is it really headed to a holodeck? And he just smiled and said, what else could it be? So, you know, ready player one. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.